It's not turn into an android, <laughs> which is apparently what I just did. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Natural Progression Series. Uh, our wonderful Natural Progression Series over the course of one day before we all decamp and go to Alexandra Palace tomorrow, my friends. How are we all today? You all all right? Well done. Yay. Good answer. Um, uh, you're all right, chat. I feel no one ever asks. You all right? You all right, yeah. It's weird now, because this is now being picked up on your camera where you film the show. Um, good. Um, you're a bit tired, you say? Yeah. You're hard working man. You don't get the credit you deserve. I think if I was the audience, I'd be clapping you now. As well. and, and obviously Alan as well. Right. Alan and Adam. <laughs> and Rob. Right. I'm not burying you. Also, you've got a... There you go, you're going champ. Jack and Alan. Jack and Alan. Awkward, awkward now for everyone, isn't it? Um, anyway, welcome everybody. A um, couple of things. Uh, obviously, you may be aware, you can slide into my DMs. Uh, uh, so, uh, there's a couple of DMs I, I need to point out, all right? This is the first one. Um, this is from Charlie. Um, Charlie from Manchester. Where is Charlie from Manchester? Hello, Charlie. Oh, hello, Charlie. I've met you before. Um, Charlie says, um, let's try that again. It's Charlie, everybody! Hello, Charlie! Thank you. Um, also, as well, I've never seen so many shorts on the front row before. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful day this is for everybody. Um, says, hi, Jim. Quick one uh, from me. We are travelling down from Manchester for the Natural Progression series. I attend all the Manchester shows as well. I've met you before, Charlie. And says, for this show, I am bringing my dad, who is doing his first progress show. He thinks because we're in London, I can't embarrass him. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking wrong you were. Read this out. Read out this message to prove otherwise. Oh, and he's Australian, so don't mention the ashes, or we will never hear the end of it. Uh, so, Charlie's dad. Charlie, you can sit down, Charlie. Charlie's dad, you stand up a minute, right? Aren't you Dr. Alan Kennedy off of Neighbours? <laughs> Oh, sorry, I don't fucking know. Alan Kennedy was a footballer who played for Liverpool. Um, uh, well, no, no, don't sit down, dickhead. Fucking get back up. All right. Um, nice and loud so everyone can hear. What's your name, Charlie's dad? It's Paul, everybody. Hello, Paul. Stay stood up, right? It's not every day I get to do this. Don't sit down, Paul, right? Um, this is... Um, this is also, this is from Craig, right? Um, so this is, uh, Craig sent me this message. Uh, Craig, uh, I'm hoping, Craig, your Twitter handle is Savers Y2Craig, you fucking dick, right? 
You'd be like, you've had too much of a little bit of the fucking bubbly, you bellend. Um, <laughs> Where are you? Where are you, Craig? 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 Oh, hello, Craig. So, Craig, as a wrestling fan, I'm third generation. My dad got me into wrestling and his mum got him into it. It's lovely, right? My dad and I haven't been to a wrestling show together since I was a kid, but today my 62-year-old dad is here with me. Right. What I love is, I'm presuming that's your dad, because he looked at you as if to go, don't fucking tell him me age. <laughs> it was so beautiful. It was like, come on, take five years off like it's show business, right? <laughs> he hasn't been to a wrestling show in over a decade, but I've hyped progress and the talent up to him. Um, P.S. He never buys a round, so don't expect him to start now. Good work, Craig. Now... <laughs> Craig's dad. Craig's dad, if you could just stand up for a second, what we're going to have here, we're going to have ourselves a good old-fashioned dad-off. That's what we're going to have. <laughs> nice and loud so everyone can hear, Craig's dad. What is your name, Craig's dad? Daniel. It's Daniel, everybody. So, Daniel and Paul. Daniel and Paul, Daniel and Paul. We're going to decide which dad we like the most, and the other one will be excommunicated. Okay, so... Australia. <laughs> Good start for you. Fucking nice one, Daniel. I've got your back, right? Um, Paul, what do you do for a living, Paul? You're a physio. Yeah. <laughs> Some people applauded, going physios are important. Some people went, ooh, you went to school. <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> and Daniel, what do you do, Daniel? You're retired, but... <laughs> That's it, they're cheering, mate, because you've retired now, you've still got a pension, we're all fucked, right, so. Daniel, what did you do before you were retired? London Underground Train Driver. Oh. Strong geographical connection. has the answers. Okay, Paul, 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 what would you say the best thing about your son Charlie is? What would you say the best thing is? What would you say the best thing about him is? Don't fuck this up. What would you say the best thing about him is? He's a wrestling fan. <laughs> yeah, the smart people here have gone, he's got nothing. He's just tried to appeal to the crowd. It's okay, we've all noted it, Charlie, don't worry. both our fathers over there. Good. Look, you've made a really strong start to the chanting, but it's a whole weekend. Don't fucking peek too soon, okay? Big dad's wrestling. <laughs> Big dad's wrestling. Yeah, it's good. The best bit is, as you two sons have to explain most of these chants for the rest of the day. <laughs> what are they chanting? They're chanting Big Dad's Wrestling. Why? Well, hang on, let's just get Wikipedia up. Um... <laughs> so I normally do 
this, uh, and obviously the fathers need to be involved in this. Uh, give us a cheer if you've been to see progress before. Yay! Nice one. Give us a cheer if this is your first time. I have never seen a more concentrated pointing at a human ever. Who are you? First of all, your name, nice and loud. Dan. It's Dan, everybody. <laughs> See, Daniel. See, technically you're a Dan, but you knew to say Daniel to avoid this happening. Because you've learned. This Dan hasn't. Um... Dan! Where are you from, Dan? South Wales? A brief pause where people went, do we like them? Yes. Um, what do you do, Dan? What's your job? You're currently unemployed, but you're a music teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Your enthusiasm for that applause was really misplaced. <laughs> Just clapping really loud. I mean, he wasn't. I mean, technically, because he's amused. I got it. Technically, right, if he is a music teacher, the way you should have clapped should have been with two fingers, just like that, in rhythm time. Um, which is a really fucking good music teaching joke. Um, and how long have you been unemployed for, mate? About two months. It's because it's the fucking summer holidays, mate, it's not. <laughs> they just shut the school. <laughs> Do you know you can go back next week? <laughs> It'll be open again, you'll still have a job. <laughs> fucking hell, Dan. <laughs> and Dan, what's your excuse for taking this long to come and see us here? What's your excuse, Dan, what's your excuse? <laughs> What? You're broke as fuck. It's fair enough. It's fair enough. <laughs> right. Stop. Right. Dan, stand up and make them sing that in a fucking round. No term times. <laughs> Dan, you're welcome today, Dan. Everyone give Dan a round of applause. <laughs> so, whether you like the two dads or whether you're Dan, whether it's your first time, whether you've been to see us loads of times before, obviously, we want you to have a good time today. Drink what you want, shout what you want, but please be considerate to the people around you. And remember that here in progress, there is only one rule, and that rule is this. Excellent stuff. Here's Joel, everybody, making his way to Right. Oh, such a strong grip. <laughs> Fucking crush my fingers. He is. He's hot, isn't he? Look at him. You all right, Joel? I'm good, thanks, mate. My friends! We have our entire Natural Progression series for you condensed into one day today. The first half of the show will be all of the quarter-final matches. My friends, are you ready to kick off the tournament? <laughs> and John Bradley, please. Music.
My friends, our opening contest is a natural progression series quarter-final match. Introducing first across the ring and to my left. Weighing in at 112 kilos, hailing from Hamburg in Germany, representing Ring Camp, Fight Muella! And his opponent in the corner to my right. Weighing in at 165 pounds, hailing from Old Street in London, he is the master of the half crab, the OJMO! Back in 2013, the first ever Natural Progression Series final at the Garage in Islington. Mark Andrews versus Paul Robinson. Mark Andrews won the first and inaugural Natural Progression Series, and it took him less than 15 minutes to become Progress Wrestling World Champion after that. Since then, Flash Morgan Webster, Pastor William Eva, who went on to be a Progress Wrestling Champion himself. Tony Storm winning the fourth Natural Progression Series to become the inaugural Progress Wrestling Women's Champion. And last year, Mark Davis winning the Natural Progression Series and choosing to cash in against the Swords of Essex for him and his partner, Kyle Fletcher, to win back their Progress Tag Team Championships. This isn't just about winning the one-day tournament today. This is about a shot at a title of your choosing whenever you should choose to cash it in. My name's Glenn Joseph, joined by Matt Richards, and we are in match one of the one-day tournament, the Natural Progression Series, and what a match to start us off. Yeah, and we're kicking it off with two favorites for this tournament. Maybe the fans' favorite and the hand-picked favorite. Obviously, the OJMO, incredibly popular with the Progress Ultras recently, but Veit Muller is the man that has been hand-chosen by the Progress World Champion. Well, absolutely. This year, the Natural Progression Series, we always try and put a different spin on it. And this year, it's been, if you like, mentors putting together their, not necessarily their students, but people who they believe deserve to be in this title, this, this title contention tournament here, the Natural Progression Series as Muller mows down. And there's more than just Muller versus OJMO here. We are looking at what is essentially a prelude of the of the seconds, if you like, of our main event tomorrow, still chasing Alexandra Palace. The main event, Volta defending the Progress Unified World Championship against David Starr. And I wonder who they chose to go into this tournament, Matt. And, and that's what's really fascinating about this whole tournament, but maybe more specifically this contest. You've got to feel that, that Star and Walter have been in the ears of both of their protégés as we're getting a real good look at what Veit Muller is all about. You know, we spoke before we came on air about Muller, and you were kind of asking me what to expect from this wrestler. Obviously, a, a new member of Ring Camp, but really has that old European catch wrestling style. That very simple but effective method that we've seen Volta employ to become world champion. Everything Muller does is dangerous and vicious, as we've seen early on with them shoulder tackles. And shoulder is a story here as well, of course, because the OJMO is coming into this tournament with certainly some neck trouble. His neck has been bothering him going into this and we say this every year and we will come back to this over the course of the tournament three matches in one day benefits some talent involved in this more than others but Veit Muller the first person to ever be invited to join ring camp and put in by the world champion Walter crisscross there by the OJMO still heads his takeover Joel Allen a face of action a dropkick sends Muller to the outside and a drop kick. We put out a social poll over the course of this week. 
Well, we asked who we thought the Progress Ultras thought was going to win this tournament, and many people picked the OJMO at least as a finalist. And OJMO could be lining Muller up here. Looking for that Fosby flop, but Muller evades it, doesn't realize that OJMO's on the apron and a kick straight into the chest. And if there's one advantage that OJMO has is that he's riding a wave of momentum coming into this tournament. That big singles victory over Shigehiro Irie and of course that tag team match where he teamed up with David Starr to take on Volta and Irie. There is no one in this tournament riding a wave of momentum quite like OJMO. Ducks alive from Will up to the second rope. Crossbody attempt, but the big man from Hamburg catches OJMO. Slips out the back into the corner and catches Muller coming in with a back elbow. Oh, my goodness. Now, I've seen Zach Gibson throw some thrusts in his time, but I don't think I've ever seen the impetus behind it like Muller just hit the OJMO. And you can see exactly why he was invited in, <laughs> with open arms into ring camp, really fits into that group of professional wrestlers. Of, just so violent with his strikes. Oh! And certainly Volta-esque with that chop into the chest of OJMO. Oh. You hear by the reaction of the sold-out crowd here at the Electric Ballroom. to the edge of the ring. And I, I think this is here what makes Muller a favorite for this tournament. He's so good at grinding opponents down, taking his time to dissect his opponents without withstanding a lot of damage. And that is going to work in your favor, especially in a one-night tournament. Well, absolutely. You're going to have to win three matches in order to be crowned the winner of the Natural Regression Series and enjoy that and join that illustrious list of people who have already won this tournament and of course at such an advantage as well with that open title opportunity some people have been a little dare i say sneakier than others with when to use that opportunity with various levels of of success as well but at this point like you said Mueller manages to avoid oh to avoid the OJMO's offense thus far and grinds him down that trapezius lock that he was using before. And now that cravat double knees into the face of the OJMO. Now cover 10 by Muller. You know, I mentioned how much of a, a practitioner of that old European catch style that he is. A, you can see in that, that maneuver there, a little bit of William Regal, a little bit of Finn Finlay, and you know, two men that made their names in tournaments in Hamburg, in Germany. And you know that Muller has absorbed that history and influence. Oh! Of course, you know, they, these are run tournaments that would last weeks going into months, that tournament wrestling in, in Germany, that catch style. And I think you could be forgiven for, oh, that elbow now down across the, the neck trapezius and chest area of the OJMO. You forgive me for thinking, looking at Mueller, that he was going to be, a, a, you know, this big kind of powerhouse, but you're absolutely right, man. It's, it's a lot of the European and, and dare I say, old British style that that Mueller actually brings to, to the competition and brings to ring camp. And that is something that, that is handed down from generation to generation. And it's something that is not accessible to a lot of people. And Mueller's made a vantage oh, of it. now. Roll up back. Oh, Jim Owen. Mueller manages to escape. Oh, Jim going to the leg. That's certainly a good idea to chop down the much bigger fight. And now clubbing blows into the back of oh, the OJMO. Now the point of the elbow between the shoulder blades. Uh, maybe a, a bit of a point, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh in this, but OJMO coming out with that tape on his neck and his trapezius, to me, at this early stage in the tournament is a bad idea because it is essentially a, 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 a target on your body. And the last thing you want is a target on your body with someone who's so precise and dangerous with his offense. We know in this ever-changing landscape that is British independent wrestling, the, the dangers and the workload, if you like, is now more so than ever being increased on the young men and women who are part of this British wrestling scene. 
you know, the OJMO has gone from wrestling maybe, maybe once every few weeks. You are using the full advantage there of the ropes and indeed distracting Geoffrey Joel Allen. Of course, when you associate with the likes of Timothy Thatcher and Volta, and you mentioned earlier on that Mueller's like a hybrid of Volta and Marcel Bartel. Oh, a member of Ring Cup! Oh! Managed to get the knees into the small of the back there of Mueller. No, Jim, oh, now. Oh! Lance a dropkick in the face. Starting to rock, fight. And another dropkick by Staggett. Ojimoto to the second rope. And a missile dropkick. Hooks to the leg nearest the ropes. Could be, but Mula out before three. That's the difference between the OJM of a year ago and the OJMO of now is that with those reps in the ring, with the amount of matches that he's had, you gain experience. OJMO back off, who measures him, but misses with the kick. A clothesline into the barrel chest of Muller. There's a knee from the OJMO. Well, OJMO has got himself back in this contest. Reminiscent of that singles matchup with Irio, where he got some separation. Oh! And who does that remind you of, Matt? Textbook execution on that sleeper hold. Something that I'm sure Muller and his mentor would have perfected in the lead up to this tournament. I'm sure that Volta wants to send a message as well via one of his mercenaries to David Starr, who will be challenging Walter for the unified title. Oh, beautifully done. Take over. Oof. Ojimo catches him coming in. Oh! What a connection from the OJMO. And now the London native, the fan favorite, heading up to the top row. Mueller's back to his feet though. Oh, straight headbutt into the stomach of. OJMO. Yeah, just using whatever body part was available to him. A battering ram into the corner. And oh, well, he's maybe looking for that double underhook suplex again. And that butterfly lock. Oh. Headbutt. That's Mueller prone. OJMO. Top rope, almost mocking. Oh, low down from OJMO. It's our next hook. Oh. And Mueller just makes it out before three. Or well, maybe just a little bit of psychological warfare directed at the Progress World Champion there. We mentioned mentors and protégés. OJMO owes a lot to David Starr, and he would certainly like to send a message by not just advancing in this tournament, but by beating Mueller. Oh, Mueller. Oh, a slap by Mueller. He's only got a side lock on. Oh, no, he's got, he's got it in there. That's in deep. Goes from side control, but now OJMO trying to drop that left shoulder. Trying to transition some of the pressure, but he needs to turn away from the bicep of Mueller, not towards it. Pushes himself back. Cover! Oh, Jemo driving with the legs, but only manages to get a three. Now, can Ross, Ross through! There the, it is. The master in the hard grab! Mueller! Fighting to get near that rope! And Mueller turns! The winner of this contest, the OJMO! Mueller, the newest member of Ring Camp, taps out to the single crab from the OJMO.
OJMO! And he certainly left his mark on the OJMO! And for a debut here in progress, considering this is a man who was in a car wreck, and the, incidentally is why we never saw him tagging with Volta in the first place. I mean, Vite Muller is legit, but the OJMO seems to find a way, and that's what he's gonna have to do. One down, and if the OJMO is gonna win this natural progression series, two to go, but like you said, Matt, there is a target on that neck. as you got into the ring then. I'm certain they started chanting Lucha Paz and you went, shh, fucking keep it down. <laughs> How you doing, Lucha Paz? Everyone's favorite luchador referee. You doing all right? Have you learned any new tricks lately? No, no, have you not? No. <laughs> right, one second, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. This there's someone over here who is genuinely convinced that you know loads more tricks. Um, um, what, um, what, what trick do you know that he can definitely do? He can definitely do a roly-poly. <laughs> Come on, fucking do it. Yeah! Look at that! From Mexico City, Paz! There you go, you fucking, you were raring to go with that as well, weren't you? Right, Dragon Rana. <laughs> <laughs> On the guy sat in the wolf shirt there. Just from the top. <laughs> Good work. Good work though, well done. Pass this over round of applause for us while we go. Yeah, do that. You must also, you owe him a drink because he fucking let you off there, didn't he? Whatever he said, you would have had to attempt at it. And he said Rolly Poling, it was something you could do. So fucking well done. My friends, are you ready for our second tournament match? John Briley, please, the music.
My friends, the following contest. The following contest is a natural progression series quarter-final match. Introducing first in the corner to my left, weighing in at 180 pounds and hailing from Edgware in London, this is the heavy hitter, Marley! And his opponent across the ring and to my right, weighing in at 207 pounds and hailing from Balham in London, this is Danny Dugan! The second quarter final match of the Natural Progression Series and... Well, I think, judging by the pre-match animosity if you like between these two men it just goes to show how much this means to both Danny Duggan and Malik and I, I, now, I'm not doubting the the hunger of the other six competitors in this <laughs> tournament but if, if, if pictures speak words that that scene right there spoke a thousand words of determination obviously Danny Duggan back in this tournament put back in by Mark Davis from last year a semi-finalist last year losing to the eventual winner Mark Davis in that semi-final so obviously wants to go a step further than last last time around but Malik is the, the, the interesting one here here in progress we've only ever seen once in a in a six-man tag in a pre-show matchup representing frontline uh, wrestling so it's gonna be interesting to see what the heavy hitter can do on the, the main stage well, the heavy hitter has been waiting for his opportunity. Oh my goodness! And the heavy shots are coming early here. Malik, dug off the ropes, over the top, head of steam. Oh, and he's a front kick from Malik! There's that strong style, and let's not remember, let's not forget rather than Danny Duggan training in the LA dojo under Tira Shibata. I mean, this is, this is not a, <laughs> a man who is, just been existing in the, the southern wrestling scene. This is a man who has gone around the world to learn his craft! Oh, oh, oh. Saito suplex of Malik. Good night. And we can see that maturity now. Oh, pinned with the, not even the knee, almost on the jaw of Malik there by Danny Duggan. You know, and our, our broadcast colleague, uh, Fraser Thomas, has been talking to me about Malik and said that you just wait. Just wait for this firecracker to get lit and go through this tournament. Fraser really believes that, that, that there is so much potential oh. in the league, but you've got to feel as well that Duggan... Snaps him into a lateral press by Duggan. Coming in from last year, it's going to feel like he missed his opportunity. And how many opportunities or how many second chances do you get in professional wrestling? So both men are really incredibly fired up for this contest, but seems to be that Duggan's getting the early advantage. Malik, striking style, going for the knee of Duggan. Duggan absolutely in the best shape of his career. When I spoke to him earlier on, he, he said he does over 500 squats a day, heavy weights at least five times a week, a meticulous diet. And of course, you can see it in the, the maturity and not only the physique of Danny Duggan, but the ways he's starting to employ his if you like, his attributes to the way he wrestles. Duggan with a head of steam. Malik misses. Oh! Shotgun drop kick by Malik. Urging Duggan up. Oh, and a drop kick into the corner. Cover now. Only a two again. And I think it's fair to say that both men here are low on the favorite pole, especially to this audience, which if, if you're in that position, that's gonna fire you up because they have a chance to prove absolutely everyone wrong. I mean, the winner of this goes into a semi-final against some of the favorites in this yeah. tournament, regardless of results yeah. coming up. So you've got to think that, oh! Malik with that diving back elbow. Now's an opportunity with the cover. Only a two count again. And you think back to that, that third uh, MPS when, when Pasta won that tournament. No one thought that Pasta would win that tournament. And then no one <laughs> thought that he'd go on to be a Progress World Champion. 
and when we put it in such a combustible environment of, of having a one-night tournament, this is the night where you can become a name in progress. Well, there's also something that goes, oh, big knee by Malik, and then a strike, and they call him heavy hitter for a reason. Here goes Malik, to the side of the head of Duggan again. Now rolls him back, inside leg, hooked. Duggan's out before three is the, the mentors watching on, whether it be internationally. I've literally just had a Skype call from, I'm not gonna tell you who, but one of the mentors in this tournament who was asking, could you, uh, could you just prop the phone up so I can watch this while it's on? And for those who are here, the likes of Paul Robinson, who put Malik forward here, who Malik credits as the best UK wrestler the best wrestler that you could ever produce and that obligation that these these younger kind of protégés have. Oh, what a standing dropkick by Duggan. And, and what an endorsement to have from Paul Robinson, the f one of the finalists in the first ever MPS series. So Robinson clearly has a lot of stock in Malik, as does his tag team partner, Will Ospreay, who's used him in frontline as well. But Duggan here is overpowering Malik. We've seen the incredible striking ability of Malik, but it's the power and precision of Duggan that's really given him control over this. Oof! Malik with the headbutt sends Duggan to the back of his head. He rolls to the out, the outside. You would think out of the strike range of Malik, who falls back in. And the fact is, they've, they've come so quickly out of the gate here, Matt. That you've got to think ahead. What, what if what if you do win this match? You then have to go on to a semi-final. And then the one advantage you do have being the second match on is that you have the second most amount of time to rest, but you are right. They came flying out of the traps and now are really feeling the effects of that. Oh, Malik, totally rolling, dug it in, but only a count of two again. Danny Duggan, who feels like he's never, he's never found his feet here in progress. You've got to remember, Danny Duggan was responsible for one of the, the most impressive matches of last year. Credited by, by fans who then seem to have, oh, shot by Duggan, who then seem to have forgotten about him. Duggan, he's holding the ropes. Straight over into that. Boston Grand Malik tries to fight from underneath him. Now you mentioned that time he spent in the New Japan LA Dojo, that Boston Crab showing that he, he's got his fundamentals down as he transitions here. Duggan escapes, goes back to the leg, but Malik again kicks to the oh the jaw, my goodness. Duggan goes for it again. Malik catches him coming in. Well, Duggan's rocked. Oh! Drop kick right on the money from Malik, and it seems like the support of the crowd here starting to get behind the heavy hitter. Goes for the, the knee. Duggan evades, goes behind, and another waist lock. Now Duggan has the advantage, but. Using the momentum to send Duggan to the outside with the side set from Malik, who now Duggan evades Malik. Very cagey by both men here, but finally Malik manages to land a drop kick. Skins the cat. But safe to say, there's a bit of evacuation in the splash zone. Malik, top rope. Onto the outside, onto Duggan. Seems to be that Malik is holding on to the tempo of this match a little bit better at this point in time and starting to see a few new things from Malik in terms of taking risks like that. Maybe that's the time he spent with his mentor in preparation for Paul Robinson, someone who's known for his dangerous strikes as well as his high flyer. Well, let's not discount Malik in his international training as well, who spent three months of the kind do dojo learning under Takamishi Noku and no! Oh! Duggan's out before three. And 
maybe just a bit of wear and tear taking its toll there. Malik wasn't covering the shoulders of Duggan, giving him an opportunity to slip out. Well, to make it as fair as possible, Matt, the winner of this match will go on to meet the winner of the first contest. So we know that the winner of this match will meet the OJ MO, and you've got to think the heavy hitting style of of Malik, or oh, the, the strongest style, if you like, of Danny Duggan. Oh, short European by both men. And now we're getting a trade off in the middle of the ring. Malik and Duggan just firing shots into each other. So we've broken down to the beginning of the match again. We've got a hockey fight here in the electric ballroom. Back up and eats a back elbow. Malik goes underneath. Duggan on the jaw. That's not something you often see from an Ensekiri. Half and half on the back of his head. Danny Duggan is out on his feet. You can see the eyes rolling in the back of the head. Oh! Dragon suplex. Matt, I know that both of us have been knocked out in our respective sporting slash wrestling careers. And sometimes you can wake up in a very funny position and Danny Duggan looked like his body just folded over itself there. Well, Duggan now trying to get up, manages to get up onto a forearm, but Malik's already up to his feet. Oh my goodness! Spinning tombstone by Duggan! Cover! And the league just rolls to the shoulder! Somehow! Oh my goodness! But Malik's in a world of trouble! Middle of the ring! Brain Buster! Cover by Duggan! Series. The winner of this contest, Danny Duggan! And Danny Duggan has spoken often about what does he have to do to get the Progress Ultras on his side. The blood, sweat and tears that Danny Duggan has left in not just the Progress ring, but rings all around the world to hone his craft. And it seems every time the Progress Ultras, for some reason, either forget about him or, as he sees it, don't appreciate him. But they may have no option today because Danny Duggan is heading to the semi-finals to take on the fan favorite, the OJMO. That is our first semi-final. Two quarter-final matches still to come here at the Natural Progression Series 6.
challenge the following contest is a natural progression series quarter final match. Introducing first across the ring and to my left. Weighing in at 210 pounds of sexual gammon from the city of dreams, Milton Keynes, the damn dirty dog, Gene And his opponent in the corner to my right, weighing in at 175 pounds from Dublin in Ireland. He is the supreme suplex machine, Scotty Davis. Well, I've seen a lot of things. Uh -huh. I've seen a lot of entrances. I've been part of a lot of entrances. I've, I'm going to be honest, in case you, you've not met me, uh, the theatrics of wrestling <laughs> <laughs> quite often something. I've heard a lot of things sung and chanted here. Mm -hmm. and two very popular young men, but I've got to be honest, if he bursts out of a kennel with a sailor's hat on, <laughs> you're pretty much my favourite wrestler in the world. That's and let's be sentence. honest, have you looked around at how many yep. people are wearing? I bought a ticket to see Gene Money. I 210 pounds of sexual gammon from the <laughs> City of and Dreams. Look, look <laughs> the, this phenom that is Gene Money is genuinely heartwarming it's this is the guy that absolutely everyone in this building wants to go all the way oh wow oh. everything Kurt Angle pull his straps down oh there go the uh, nipple covers but look Gene Money is one of the most complex people in the world ever he, he's a walking contradiction I mean this man looks like he's had a fight with a spray tan and lost but he can wrestle and and the problem for Gene Money here tonight is he is in there with an absolute machine. This Scotty Davis is 18 years old, and I said before we went live on commentary, he's already won more medals in his life than I've oh, ever God. done. He's an unbelievable athlete, and Gene Money's going to have to try and find a way to overcome that. Gene Money grabbing the side headlock. Let's just finish talking about... Oh, I'm going to talk about Gene Money for a second. And I, I know that we can talk about both these characters till, till the cows go on, but Gene Money has had such a transition in his life. You've got to remember that this is a guy who's spoken about the demons that he's had over the last year. This is a man who was perhaps, you know, a lot lower as now. Both men showing off their athleticism. What hype by Scotty Davis! Catches the arm, goes over, front face on now. Oh, he got the gator rolls! Scotty Davis with that leverage around the neck. Oh, God. They're called Gator Rolls for a reason. It's like being trapped in a vice and being mauled to the ground. Roll through by Davis. Straight back up to his feet. Oh, and clean on the top of the head of that damn dirty dog. Scotty Davis. Da Davis coming off the ropes. There we go. Oh, Money forces him to the outside. Now Davis back in. Money manages to stay on the ropes. Slingshot! Spear! Just like the shit shoulder on his tattoo. That was straight out of Edge's playbook. By his own admission, it is a terrible Edge tattoo. Inside out! Sent on by Money! Come on! Oh, that move right there, I believe, is called the Fat Morgan Webster. Um, but look, Gene Money is an inspirational human being. He is living his dream, and the only thing that Gene Money wants to do is fulfill that dream tonight by being the MPS champion. 
Oof. Oh, oh my god, the Supreme Suplex Machine with a waist lock there, lifting the, the heavier money, now sending him off. But Gene Money is an inspirational story in an awful lot of ways. He's fought a long time to get here to progress, and that's not this guy. Oh, oh! Oof, that's a nasty fall there for Davis on that top rope. And Money almost uh, waiting for a moment there. But Punishing that shoulder blades and neck of Davis. There was a really rough landing on that turnbuckle, and Money oh, will take advantage of it. Single leg drop kick into the lateral press. But Gene Money doesn't want to be known as just this this lovable character. I mean, he wants to be known as this lovable character, but he's fought such a long time to get to progress, to get to this natural progression, and he said winning this could mean absolutely everything to him. Talks about the biggest inspiration in his life being outside of wrestling. Talking about his, his wife, of course, who he's been very vocal about on social media and her battles through, through all of the health problems that she's had. And I mean, everyone's got a story, Matt. And when it comes to the Natural Progression Series, I, I believe that every wrestler who is you know, up to this level wants to be in it. But Gene Money said, you want to know true sacrifices? Living! Oh, man. And now Spy Buster by Money could put away one of the favorites. Gene Money knows about real sacrifice. And as much as this wonderful, fun loving character, it, it, it is, it, it's designed to entertain. He wants to bring joy to people. But Gene Money wants to win this natural progression series. That's not to say, of course, that Scotty Davis doesn't. But this is the thing Gene Money has to overcome a teenage prodigy. The, the amount of accolades and achievements that, that Scotty Davis had in his life before he was 12 years old with amateur wrestling is impressive enough. But then you want to talk about the year that Scotty Davis has had in 2019. He shared a ring with Darby Allen, Mike Bailey, and Jujin van der Liger, and won all three of those matches. This young man is one of the most outstanding wrestlers anywhere in the world, let alone his home country of Ireland. And it's the reason why Jordan Devlin picked him and he's going to back him all the way. All the way, sorry. And Scotty Davis' father was a weightlifter in his, in his own right. Oh, no. Dave's father, a former Mr. Island in, in bodybuilding. Oh, what? A suplex by Davis! I mean, freestyle wrestling since he was six years old. You mentioned before, Matt, the accolades, a seven-time Irish champion, three-time British champion, a kickboxing background, submission wrestling background. This. He's 18 years old. Oh, and he's looking for that spin kick early on. Oh. Turns around. Oh, German with the bridge. Manages to maintain waist control. Money's looking to that top rope. Trying to get there. He's got a leverage advantage. Oh, no. Oh, Regal Plex. Oh, dumps him on his head. Deep cover by Davis. Oh, but Davis is still again going back to that neck. Yeah, it might, might look like the uh, Supreme Suplex machine is firing up his cylinders, but one of those cylinders is faulty. That neck is giving him a lot of problems. We obviously saw that, that fall early on, but he seems to be getting the suplexes. Oh, hang on, looking for that supremacy. Roll the dice. Gene misses. The master oh. of the Ainsley Lariat. Now positioning, Davis. Oh! Northern Lights release suplex. Giving the suplex machine a run for his money there. God, you're good. Here comes Gene Money! Oh, wiping Davis out on the outside! Now the adrenaline's pumping and that damn dirty dog sends Davis back into the ring. Needs to follow it up. Keep him off his guard. Oh! 
James Blunt post trauma coming. Oh, Ricochet and Davis off the mat. That whiplash effect is only going to increase the damage already done, but somehow the teenager from Ireland gets a shoulder up. Davis might not be able to take what the big damn dirty dog is. Oh, what a kick by Davis! It's hilarious! Money can do it! Shoulders down! And Davis is out before three! What? And now, Matt. Psychological advantage to Scotty Davis, if not the physical one. If you're a Kevin Smith fan, you'll know the term fly fat ass. Oh my god, nobody home! Davis now, elbows into the side of the ear. Ducks the lariat, up and round. Supremacy! Cover by Davis! What a match here in the quarterfinals of the NPS! Progression series, but Gene Money is an absolute fucking legend for all the stuff he's done this week. Not just promoting the fact that he's here, but promoting the whole show. So he deserves a round of applause as well. <laughs> so we now know three of our semi finalists. We have one more quarter final match. My friends, are you ready for the final quarter final? And John Riley, please, the music.
My friends, the following contest is a natural progression series quarter-final match. Introducing first the Costa Ring. Earlier this week, Jim, my name was dragged through the mud on Twitter. You put an A instead of an O. Now, although it was promptly fixed, my brother, my heart still aches. I would like you to spell my name rather than announce it, please. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Introducing first, weighing in at 210 pounds, and hailing from the 0121. His name is spelled D A N M L O. time, I'll give you one more chance and I'll leave you with your teeth. <clears throat> D-A-N-M-O-L-O-N-E-Y, Dan Maloney! in the corner to my left. Playing at 198 pounds and hailing from parts unknown, this is the Black Swan, Gar Myself and Matt Richards are always, well, I think, to, I think we, we, we're fairly straight down the middle when it comes to calling this impartially. But when we talk about two men who represent the two opposite sides of this industry that we love so much, I, I have to believe that there is a lot of Cara Noir in, in my side of the table and a lot of Dan Maloney on yours, the theatrics, the finesse, the, the beauty, the art form that is sports, entertainment, or professional wrestling, whatever you want to call it. And Matt, the violence. That's yeah. uh... <laughs> this is, it's as simple as this. It's performance art versus the art of violence. And this is exactly why we love this. I mean, I am biased when it comes to Dan Maloney, a young man that I have known almost from day one. Someone who comes from a background where everyone he knows is either in prison or working a dead-end job or has never gone anywhere in life. This this young man had a start in life that completely set him My off at a back foot, but... So, sorry, man, Cameron Noir! He may not have the size advantage, but he is trying to wear down Triller! And as much as you said, the art of violence is exactly right, Matt. Dan Maloney is a genuinely dangerous human being. And he's just fueled by that, 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 that frustration that he's had, that, uh, that he's come from. That the only thing that Dan Maloney ever wants to do is have a fight, get paid for the fight so he can take care of his family. And this is exactly what MPS will give him the opportunity to. You know, as much as Kara Noir and, and we will get to it has been overlooked, Dan Maloney is someone that's always been overlooked. Goodness, Kara Noir who views himself as an artist rather than a professional wrestler. And right now himself and Dan Maloney into the dropkick head of Steve. My goodness! This is everything that I love about this business. Karen Noir said before, we mentioned when we were talking just before the tournament started, with the exception of us running this Wembley show, the most national press coverage we've ever had for a weekend. And the natural progression series talking to the, to the likes of 
of, of Karen Noir and, and him obviously being very eloquent with his statements and talking about the fact that you know he should have been here a long time ago. It's something that a lot of people here at Progress agree with. We're talking about the way that, that he has this psychological advantage over so many of the competition. And with somebody like Dan Maloney, you've got to believe that Karen Noir is going to try and get inside the head of Driller. Yeah, and it's going to be something that, that Dan's never seen. And and the, the thing is here that, you know, as much as I love Dan and, 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 and want Dan to do well, I have got to see the the transformation that Kara Noir has undergone over the last year or two. He has gone from being the forgotten man to being firmly in the spotlight here at Progress. And it, and it isn't just the theatrics, it isn't just the entrance, it's what he can do when the bell rings. When what he's doing right now is, as I said, mind games with Dan Maloney, who sends Noir to the outside. But it isn't just about the psychological advantage that Karen Noir has. Almost an, an affinity, a similar story to you know, the star of the Nina Samuels show, Nina Samuels. I mean, the Black Swan of British wrestling was a formerly, formerly a dancer in the Royal Ballet and he was asked to leave because of anger management issues. This is somebody who can snap. There is a really vicious and dark side to Cara Noir. <laughs> Off! And, and this is something that Dan, you know, usually does in his matches, but this is something that Dan might not want to tap into. An incredibly talented mixed martial artist. Oh! Cover by Driller right on the shoulders. Only a, a two count. You know, I was mentioning about how, how talented a, a mixed martial artist that the Car and War is a background in karate as well as other mixed martial arts. He's a very, very capable striker. But but maybe most importantly, he's a very, very capable professional wrestler. Well, he certainly has the, the complete package, the mystique. And also one of the things that he said earlier on today in the limited amount of time that you can actually, God, get to talk to Karl Noir is, is that he said he relishes, something he said in the national newspaper this week, he relishes the idea of wrestling more than once. He doesn't just want one match. He wants to express his art differently every time he steps in between those ropes. Oh, it sets Stern first into the corner. There goes by Maloney. Only a two again. I mean, when your, your biggest influences in your profession are the likes of, of Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy and and share. I mean, you bring an awful lot to the table. There's more than just getting into a fight. But that's it. Snap suplex by Maloney. And let's be honest. When it comes down to a fight, I've got to be got to be honest with you. If I'm looking at my roster, there's two men that I would pick to go go with me to a fight. One would be Paul Robinson, and the other would be Dan Maloney. Yeah, and he's going to have to try and bring the fight to. Kara here using that, that up kick perfectly and uh, you can see that, that Kara Noir holding his heel there on, on, the le on his left foot and that's obviously something that, that is now known with Kara wrestles barefooted but the impact on, on a lot of landings comes down with all the pressure on the, the ball of your foot but oh, oh. and that may be poorly advised from Kara Dan Maloney! Mark going for the fingers again! Headbutt by Dan. Oh. Oh. Push to the corner. Maloney with a big clothesline. Mark up on the shoulders. Dan Maloney, who was put into this 
this tournament, of course, by the, the godfather of British strong style, the former Atlas Division champion. We'll see tomorrow in action with Tyler Bates, Mustache Mountain against Matt Riddle. Oh, Maloney, they're looking for that driller. We've seen the damage that that can oh, do. Whoa. Chris Brooks, another kind of... Oh, there's one of them swan woos from Noir. Massive impact, just ricocheting Maloney off the turnbuckles. Noir goes into the corner, oh, but catches Maloney this time. Head of steam, he goes Noir. That's him with a forearm again. Sam avoids Maloney, goes behind, waits lock. Oh, onto the shoulder of Maloney with that German suplex. Awakening from Noir. Cover now! Karl Noir sides. Rick Rude is his. And this says a lot about a human being. When you're a child and your favorite wrestler is Rick Rude. Crowd now. Split between Driller and Black Swan. Oh, there's that sleeper hold. Well, the blackout sleeper has put so many people away. Trying to get some, some extra oh. elevation. Oh, and there's the strength. If you look at percentage of body fat on wrestlers in the UK, I'm pretty sure Karen was going to be towards the, the bottom of that list. But Driller now up to the, the top rope, front face lock. Oh my goodness! Super points by Maloney! Top of Noir, giving him no rest. Oh, there he is! Blackout Sleeper! He's got the hooks in! Oh, look how tight the vice is! Maloney, defiant! Look at the wrench by Noir! Maloney's ha fading, though. Maloney's ha fading. Ha The winner of this contest, Cara Noir! Dan Maloney, one of the toughest men. We've said it all along, Matt. But the fact is, when the blood is cut off to the brain in that blackout sleeper of Cara Noir, it's game over. And maybe that is what makes Cara Noir so different from everybody else in this tournament. He can come at you from any angle, and he's so obscure, so different. How do you prepare for a wrestler like Cara Noir? Well, the curtain might have fallen on Dan Maloney's tournament, but Act 2 is in the future of Cara Noir, who has to go on into the semi-finals and face Scotty Davis. But is it going to end? And a standing ovation and an encore for the Black Swan at the end of the NPS 6.
right to the camera. Like, Diego Maradona celebrating a goal in the 1994 World Cup. Just less off me tits. Um, <laughs> you left some there. Um, anyway, welcome back to part two of the show. Are we all alright? Just out of interest, who's coming to Ali Pali tomorrow? John told me to say, uh, if you've got anyone who you want to bring along with you, tickets are on sale through us till nine o'clock tonight for tomorrow. It's going to be pretty fucking full at Alexandria Palace. We are super excited. Joel, are you excited? Oh. Fucking show it then, Joel. Come on. Uh... <laughs> See. What was that? said take your top off I'm not fucking trying to get involved you've got the wire and everything he can't he can't he's wired for sound he can't do that okay so um all right fucking hell tough how excited are you about this particular point of the show I've never seen someone sprint like that for this so oh Catherine Joel you will post where's the, where's the camera like you don't fucking know oh Catherine Joel here we go Build the expected push. One, two, three! Oh, just the tricep. Ah, oh, yes! Fucking hell. Audition to be in Magic Mike the Musical. <laughs> the Joel's back. Um, oh, there's Gary. Gary! Gary, come in. I need to talk to you, mate. Come in. Gary, come on. Come on. I need to talk to you, Gary. It's important. Here comes Gary. Gary. Take your seat, Gary. This is important, Gary. This is Gary, everybody! Yeah. Gary's a good lad, I like Gary very much. Gary! Gary, um, so this is someone called Mark Heron sent me a message. Where's Mark? Hello, Mark. This is Mark, everybody. Hello, Mark. Says, hi, Jim. My mate Gary is wearing his Plymouth shirt today. As they played my team, Port Vale. Should be booed just because Robbie Williams supports you. Um, we've all asked. 
ask him what the score was, but it would be awesome if you could ask him how Plymouth got on against my team, Port Vale, today. So, silence please. How did Plymouth get on today, Gary? Abandoned. Abandoned. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> there wasn't a sea mist rolling into Plymouth. How did Plymouth get on against Port Vale? Lost one nil. Lost one nil. I mean, you built that up, Mark, for a 1-0 win. Uh, to be honest, you know, sit down. Have a round of applause for Gary. Um, so, my friends, four more contests for you today. The first two matches in this half of the show will be our Natural Progression Series semi-final contest. My friends, are you ready? This is a natural progression series semi-final contest. Introducing first across the ring and to my left. Heading from Old Street in London, weighing in a 165 pounds, the master of the half crab, the OJ. Weighing in at 207 pounds and hailing from Ballon in London. This is Danny Duggan! <laughs> 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 
first of our semi-final matches, and it's safe to say oh. that the crowd are very much behind the OJMO, who is heading to the top already. Low down from OJMO. Well, OJ Omo is feeding off this crowd who are 100% behind him. He needs to lock in this half crab though. He's trying to turn him, but Duggan, the much bigger of the two, manages to escape. Gets the OJ Omo off, waist lock. Oh my God, on the top of his head! Well, maybe that's why OJMO came out so fast in this matchup, fearing the worst with the damage done to that neck, even before the, the quarterfinals, but definitely oh, after that German suplex. Lateral press and not exactly an enthusiastic kick out there by the OJMO. And you can see the lack of mobility within his shoulders and his neck. He's almost gone rigid, and oh, the impact of that German suplex was... Almost gone fit. OJMO checked on there by referee Joel Allen, and now... You know, OJMO went for a war in the first round against Veit Muller and, 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 and survived, and it's something that we've seen him do time and time again over the recent months in progress, but there's one thing doing that on a one-match-a-night basis, but one, it is in a tournament format like this, serious damage could be done. Oh, there's that knee and shin over the face again. Duggan trying to use that in his quarter-final match as well. And, and you know, we saw how fired up Duggan was in, in his first round of matchup with Malik. He, he came out so fast with so much intent in it. And it's almost that he's reveling now that, that, that he is going to take away the, oh, oh, the crowd's favorite here. Now cover attempt by Duggan. Lateral press and OJMO kicks out again. And even, even that snapmare, and Matt, you'll know this, of course, from your, your days in, in the squared circle. A snapmare that looks fairly, you know, fairly innocuous to the, to the wrestling fan because we see it so often. But when you've got an injured neck like the OJMO has at the moment, that's the, even just the talk of somebody who's got the, the mass of Danny Duggan. It, it's just the way that your neck crunches on the mat with it, especially when, when you're in a situation where OJ Mo really has not been moving freely. Oh. Cravat now, which was implemented earlier on by Fight Mueller against the OJ Mo. You've got to believe that, that Duggan. Duggan must have known even coming in today that there was the possibility that it was the OJMO, so he must have had a game plan. And that's something about tournament wrestling again, Matt, that you, you've got to be prepared for any eventuality of potential opponents. Oh, for sure. And it, it's the Oosh. thing of, you, you know, you look you look at the brackets, you look at the field. I repress again by Duggan. And, and you start analyzing who is in it. But the thing as well with Duggan and, and OJMO, two people that know each other incredibly well, have actually done ring crew together here at Progress. There is a, a, a friendship or at least a baseline friendship. But the problem when it comes into a format like this is, you know your friend's weaknesses better than their enemies at times. And Duggan is doing the smart thing. He is sucking the life out of this match. OJ Omo comes flying out and Duggan has taken away all that momentum. Duggan has grounded the OJ Omo and... Now the full Nelson. OJ Omo trying to release the fingers there. And just it. Elbows into the side of the head. Or kick straight into the jaw. Goes for the crossbody off the second rope. Cover by the OJMO, but. And just a kick out. Oh, Duncan just clotheslined him out of midair. We saw that that escape from the full Nelson is. 
lateral press again by Doug Note, hooks the leg, but only a two. OG and Mo try to walk up the turnbuckles like he did in that matchup with Moolah, but maybe readjusted out of fear that they might put pressure onto his neck. Readjusted very well, but Duggan just swatting him out of midair. Trying to power the OGMO, but OGMO trying to kick his legs out from underneath him to change that leverage advantage. But there's four arms into the smaller back of Duggan. Duggan sent to the outside. OGMO creates some separation. And you know when he heads to that corner, high risk, but is it going to be high return? Oh my god! Absolutely clear! Out with that Fosbury flop, and maybe now we do play. Ojemo, send me Duggan back into the ring. Underneath the bottom rope, I'm going for the cover. I'm sure, at this point, Ojemo has. Oh, we're going up to that. Second rope for the spiral, top rope! Oh! Covered by OJMO! Oh, no GMO, he's using these bursts of adrenaline very, very well, but I can't help but hold my breath every single time he goes for a high-risk move. I, I get it, I understand the importance of needing to win this match, to needing to win this tournament, but... OJMO, I think, going for that. I wish he was going for the knee pad there or, or not, but... Sent off by Duggan. Also into small package. And very, very late kick out there by OJMO, who's slow to get up as well. Crisscross by OJMO. Catches Duggan with the knee. Or oh, now, pulling down the knee pad. Head of steam, Matt. Oh, another one of those knees, side of the head. Cover! Oh, Duggan's out again. Just draping his lifeless body over Duggan. OJMO now, up to the top rope. Low down, this time to the small of Duggan's back. Oh, OJMO again. Heading to the top rope. Second, oh. low down on Duggan, cover! And Duggan just, and I mean just out before three. Going straight back to that leg, there's that half crab. Duggan is nowhere near the ropes. OJMO's got the ankle. Duggan is biting in his, his hands. The, Crowd here imploring Duggan to tap. Oh, Duggan is in serious trouble. He's sunk in middle of the ring. Surely. Oh. Hang on. The present William. Mambo's throwing to OJMO. That's that, that, that DNR. Mate, he's telling him to trust him. He's saying he's not Spike Trevay. The OJMO and. Oh, and once again, the OJMO showing. Oh no! Duggan goes low on the OJMO. Oh! 
Oh God, no, no, no. Not like this. The tombstone pile driver. Dug it. Oh my God. No. And the OJMO kicks out the ball three. Listen to the crowd here at the electric ball. Let's go OJMO again. Tucking goes by. Super kick. Gets rid of Eva. Gets rid of Mambo. Oh my God, Matt. Matt. Swings Wally for the kick. Oh no, electric chair. Oh no! Run the way of Oh! Duggan is out before three! And Mando is up again on the apron. Look like Danny Duggan looking for that cradle. Whoa, whoa, whoa!
So in our no one of our two finalists, it's time for our second semi-final. It's time for our second semi-final, my friends! Are you ready for our second semi-final? John Briley, music. My friends, introducing the two competitors for our second Natural Progression Series semi-final match. Introducing first, in the corner to my left, weighing in at 198 pounds and hailing from parts unknown, this is the Black Swan, Cara And his opponent across the ring and to my right. Swinging a 175 pounds and hailing from Dublin in Ireland. He is the supreme suplex machine, Scotty Davis! Well, we are on the way in our second semi-final here at the Natural Progression Series 6. We know who our first finalist is. It is none other than Danny Duggan. But we will find out who will meet him. It's either Cara Noir or Scotty Davis. Scotty Davis, though, looking for a roll-up early on here. Davis with a big kick. Up oh, he goes for the moonsault. But nobody home. I mean, Glenn, we, we saw the theatrics of Cara Noir go out of the window. And it seems to be that the Black Swan is all business in this one. Oh, Sc Scotty Davis, I'm sorry. I had to jump off the headset there for a moment to go backstage to check on the, the OJMO, who's shaken but obviously conscious, but he's absolutely devastated. It seems this rivalry with Do Not Resuscitate that's been boiling as well, it's cost him here at the Electric Ballroom today by hooker by Crook. And, well, and, uh, Matt, let, let's talk about the fact that here's some people's dream match of the tournament in the semi-final, frankly, with, with Scotty Davis and Cara Noir and Net. Davis with a pinning predicament. And it's going to be an interesting stylistic matchup from a wrestling point of view. Obviously, Cara Noir has that MMA background, but mainly with striking with that karate. And then you've obviously got Scotty Davis, an incredibly talented amateur wrestler, showing with these gator rolls. And it seems to be the controls early on going into the advantage of Davis. Now, my question is, did Cara move the theatrics out of the way because he didn't want it clouding him? Or is there some damage being done from his first round matchup? Well, it looked like focus as much as anything else, but... Oh! oh. The back of the neck of Davis! Talking of damage from a first round matchup, that, that, that fall onto the turnbuckle that Davis suffered in his matchup with Gene Money clearly did some damage, and Noir is zeroed in with it, with, with that suplex onto the apron. Davis now holding the, the back of his neck. Something we're seeing more and more prevalently in independent professional wrestling is 
is neck injuries and, and you, Matt, you you know of course it's one of the, the pivotal points of, of like of all movement when you're involved in wrestling from everything from a from a chin lock to a to a front face lock to to a headbutt everything involves involves the neck and once that's in trouble or debilitated or broken down surely that has it has a knock-on effect to, to like the entirety of the rest of your body oh god and speaking of shooting down the rest of his body scotty davis like a a dart into that corner and Karen Noir go for it again and oh my god you know it's, it's, it's Jesus and it's extra damage to a wrestler like Davis who who likes to employ a lot of suplexes that, that involves a lot of leverage and especially if he wants to bridge out of them suplexes it's gonna be incredibly difficult with a damaged neck oh. it wasn't even the the impact there on the back of Davis that sent him down was the neck jarring. And now Karen Noir with a William Regal-esque pin, the forearm against the face and driving it. I don't think Karen Noir, you know, he doesn't come in here on a white horse. He has to, well, I mean, he would do if the theatrics would allow, but this is not a simple cover now by Davis as he tries to escape, using the hole to his advantage and Carnoir can't leave his back open like that. Waist lock by Davis. That's deep. Oh, on the top, on the point of his head. There's that damage. I, I, I mentioned it earlier. It's going to be incredibly difficult to, to even get the leverage to get them over, let alone try and bridge out of it. Davis up to his feet. Oh, and there's a Capoeira kick by Karen Noir. And the storm. God, that's disgusting to watch for somebody who we already know has a neck injury. Oh, look at that. Straight into that guillotine. Kara clearly saw that Scotty was in trouble and has sunk that guillotine in. Scotty trying to turn away, alleviate some of that pressure, but. He is in a bad spot. A guillotine. Choke there. Karen Noir, but Davis is having to use brute force to get Noir up. Waist lock and now forearms. Oh. methodically just taking out the leg of Davis. Oh, but Davis now driving in with the shoulder. Here comes the young man from Dublin. There's Noir, caught. Roll through. Oh my God, Chase of Don Williams with the release. Rolling German suplex. Oh, oh. oh Davis. Showing that he can strike with the best of them, full Nelson. Yeah, a little bit of a nod to his mentor there, Jordan Devlin, showing that he can throw hands. Fisherman with a bridge, but he has to give it up. Rolls through. Oh, oh. Fisherman Buster! Cover by Davis! And Davis now. It must be incredibly difficult as well. As the crowd here in the ballroom now starting to get behind Scotty Davis and you've, oh, and indeed Karen Noir. I mean, these are certainly two of the, the favorites of the, the progress ultras here. Could be going for that supremacy. Oh, an awakening, my goodness. I have no idea how Davis kicked out of that. That brain buster onto the knee. This is progress. Oh, Madame Guillotine. This is progress. This is progress. 
couldn't take the head of Scotty Davis. The wear and tear that both have gone through in this match is going to be a concern for, for whoever manages to progress, but Kara now looking for that, 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 that package pile driver. Oh. seen enough chops between Dan Maloney and Cara Noir earlier on today and now you're starting to see the effects of tournament wrestling the pace slowing down here between Noir and Davis and the room hotting up of course it's a an early September afternoon here in London it's oh. not exactly cold in fact incredibly warm outside and very warm in the ball what? what is scotty davis doing oh my god not to his feet davis davis thinks it's for him swan woo into the corner here it is glenn no -oh. davis escapes rolls through takes the arm Oh, passes through, rolls him, misses with the kick. Oh, the blackout sleeper. This is how he won the quarterfinal match, but Davis is bracing the arm. Ah, Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, that Olympic slam dump in the wire. Oh. Davis, though, is just getting enough separation. But Noir is putting all that weight down on the neck, the damaged oh. neck. And now Noir firing away those forearms into the back of the head of Davis. Oh, no. Oh, escapes the package pile driver. There's the kick. There's another. Supremacy. Cover by Davis. The winner of this contest, Scotty Davis! Scotty Davis and Cara Noir just damn near killed each other to get to the final of the NPS 6. This is what it means for these men to be in progress. This is what it means for them to be involved in a company which has always tried to promote younger wrestlers coming through the ranks here in the UK and Europe. And Scotty Davis, Matt, he is one of the best and he just proved it against another. It's already been an incredible 2019 for Scotty Davis. But the question here tonight is, can Scotty Davis cap that off by walking into progress on day one and leaving the natural progression series six champion? Oh, my goodness. We know what our final will be. The fact is that Scotty Davis will have less time to recover than Danny Duggan will. And Danny Duggan now has backup in the form of Do Not Resuscitate. But what a match here at the Natural Progression Series semi-final. And Matt, just in case, just in case you thought that, you know, maybe we were going straight to the final. Oh no, wait, we've still got CCK versus LAX and Eddie Kingston in a street fight to come. There's your piss break.
over here to give you part three of the best fucking tag team match you've ever seen in your life. Brooks has still somehow got this octopus in on Santana. Gresham's back in. We're up to the count of eight. What the hell? Surely that's not a definitive way to end this. So the next time we come over here, best believe we're coming with one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. We're gonna roll deep as a motherfucker up in this motherfucker. LAX, in September, I say we make this gang warfare. You bring your buddy Eddie Kingston, and I'll bring these guys. The best team win. Shit, <laughs> me and LAX beat each other up for fun. What do you think we're gonna do to you? Death by count out, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they say, right? Guess what? Next match, six man, no count outs. It's not good enough. How about we make this a street fight? No rules whatsoever. You may think this is a game. You may think this is all about selling shirts and being a fucking mark, but we are fighters. And get ready, because we're going to fucking kill you. CCK, LAX, and Eddie Kingston. No disqualifications, no count outs. There will be a winner.
Introducing the two teams for the following six-man street fight. Introducing first in the corner to my right. The Mad King, Eddie Kingston! And his tag team partners, Santana Ortiz, the Latin American Exchange! And as you may be aware, Lucky Kid, due to travel issues, is not here today. So, introducing... They do have a replacement, so introducing their opponents, the team of Jonathan Gresham! apparent third member of CCK. I'm just going to put it out there, Matthew. I, I don't normally put Chris Brooks and hey, Jonathan hey, Gresham down as stupid people, no, but no. that is a stupid decision. No, no one's bringing a staple gun to a street fight. I, I, I'm, I, there is... You've got three men who will straight up, and like you said before, Eddie Kingston is wearing his... Uh, He's wearing his two-pack. Yeah, which is never a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's basically his version of Jimmy wearing white. There's going to be some yeah, yeah. carnage going on, and and oh. oh, you know, I mean, I mean, this this call it how it is. This is a gang war between CCK and LAX. It started all the way back at Laboom on that that coast to coast tour, that chance matchup of CCK versus LAX tore the building down and, and word crept across the Atlantic just how good that was. So we thought, hey, let's have chapter two on home surface at chapter 80 and LAX got the victory there, but it was a chapter 87 where this took another turn. CCK, the winners, but they were the winners via a count out. That is when LAX declared that the next time they were here, they were going to be bringing some backup. Yeah, and they brought in Eddie Kingston right now. This is... Why is... This is... Oh, God. This is such a bad idea for Jonathan Gresham and, and Chris Brooks, who, again, is launched, trying to break his own scale, heading towards the far side of the electric ballroom. Oh! You know, was, we... Santana Ortiz, the two very dangerous men. Oh my oh. God! I mean, CCK at this point are just, oh, at the mercy of Kingston and LAX. I mean, this is just, it's, it's just a massacre. Do you think Chris Brooks? Oh, oh Santana. Man, Ortiz and Santana are something else, but when you've got that mad king calling the shots in the form of Eddie Kingston, they are something it's someone, else. It's like the, the ringleader, he, he, he brings something. Oh, God. Yeah, there was something ominous that happened as well, of course, just before this match, Matt, when, whenever you see a canvas change. 
you know that normally means that well something's getting torn up and as well as bodies limbs muscles tendons ligaments and, and we know this is, is incredibly personal a uh, personal between the, the, these 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 components you know CCK uh, you know the, the, the mob might be deep but so far they're the shock ones in this one because they are being outnumbered and outgunned well, and Brooks has just left Gresham here at, at ringside I think Kingston's disappeared as well, but oh, Santana just super kicking the jaw of Jonathan Gresham clean off. And you gotta feel like that Gresham was the catalyst in this. He was his disrespect in, in, in those count out moments, you know, the, 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 the count out against Eddie Kingston in that singles match. This is where this, this all started. I mean, Ortiz has just come past us here as well. We've got Santana and Santana and Gresham on the floor of the of the ballroom, which it looks like Gresham oh. heading on to the edge of the ring. As our crew here. Well, that's Brooks. Oh, oh a super kick into Brooks as well. well. It seems like Ortiz might have taken a trip to B and Q. He's got a bin lid there, and that is the quickest screw fix. Journey of it. What the hell? I, Eddie Kingston's got a shopping cart. What is he oh doing? Oh my god, no. What is he Get that doing? woman out of the way! Get! Kingston is genuinely terrifying. It's like a, this looks like it's like the end of a jackass film. Jesus Christ! Oh, hang on, Santana and Ortiz, Gresham in the ring. Oh, oh. there's that step up moonsault oh, onto the knee as well, and we know that Gresham suffered an injury recently. I mean, oh. <laughs> I don't want to be. Oh. Ortiz is stable in the hands of Brooks. Oh. God, Santana just. Firing shots into the, the forehead of. Oh, El Perkins Jr. suffers the fate. I mean. Well, this is absolute carnage. The shopping cart is being removed. Make sure you get your pound back. Chris Brooks is absolutely no stranger to no disqualification matches, but we've seen the damage that, that Earl Perkins has done in the past to, to several people, including one of our referees. Gresham now, oh no, 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 no. Championship to Kingston, showing the championship to a team out of the DDT on the women's championship. The Pro Wrestling Women's Champion is here. Wipes out Santana, wipes out Ortiz. Maybe the family jewels were a step too far. It looks like we might actually have a three on three contest now. 
Smash him! Chris! Well, we know that Grace has an incredibly high profile match tomorrow, but she has come to the aid of CCK! And Chris Brooks wipes out everybody on the outside! So we got a bit of CC Grace again! Oh. Well, Chris Brooks and Jonathan Gresham will go in alone! No longer as Chris Brooks decides to completely destroy our deposit on the plastic chairs. God! The room is just littered with carnage. I've got a Sainsbury's shopping cart next to me if you want, man. No, I'm right. More of an Aldi, man. CCK, man, I mean, credit where credit's due. I mean, Grace has not just only just swung the, uh, the numbers back to an equal, equal playing field, but she's come in here like a house of fire. And she's mean with a chair. Oh. Oh. God, where's Chris Brooks going? What the? We've got Jonathan Gresham and Santana down here in ringside. Ringside by the aisle way. Well, I, I think Brooks is, is, is over by merch. I mean. I think that's a, a chant of you're safe on the balcony, but I don't know who knows. Gresham and Santana exchanging and avoiding strikes in the ring. And finally, Gresham manages to get a, a boot into the stomach. Covered now by Gresham. <laughs> I think that Sabu tribute is yeah, going on. Was a, that noise was Ortiz uh, doing something. Oh, no, no, no. Why has Eddie Kingston got a table? I'm going to bet you. Ten pounds of shiny shite. That is Chris Brooks' merch table. Oh, God. Brooks caught. Oh, Gresham. Oh. A Santana up. Cotch style foul driver on Santana. Well, there's a cover. Incredibly, there are covers happening in the ring. I, I can just hear things rattling round and, 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 and people just desperately trying to get out of the way. And it sounds like an, an auto shop with the amount of metal being moved around. The Kingston's got a bag of something. That I, Oh, that did, oh. Oh, no. Oh, I'm in the ring! Oh. Ortiz has Gresham. Eddie Kingston has another chair. With a bag and some other stuff. Oh, don't. Well, Santana's just... Come past us, Ortiz is... Just come past us as well. I don't... Because, oh. uh, of course... <laughs> Kingston is just launching chairs into the ring and LAX have come back with some bins. Don't try this at home, folks. Oh my god, that trash can is already. Oh, been out of shape. Santana into the back of the women's champion. Oh, oh Jesus. Brooks stamping them thumbtacks into the hand of Kingston. Oh, 
and Brooks now. Looks like he's got a homemade kendo stick. I mentioned it earlier, I've seen Brooks in some of the wildest street fights, death matches, no DQ matches, you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. It's the wildest matches in general, God. Football against an elephant, I think. Oh, and Kingston though. Swing and a miss. And Kingston. Now those Kabashi chops in the corner on Brooks. Brooks refusing to let go of that kendo stick. Hamzo on the Irish whip. His lower back into the... Oh, my God! Oh! Gresham eats a boot from Santana on the outside. And now the Mad King is heading up to the, the top rope. Brooks grabs a leg. Oh. Oh. Headbutts from Eddie Kingston. And now Jordan Grace lighting up Santana on the outside, sends him into the post. Brooks. Oh. To the top rope. Oh! Oh my God! The Calamari Catch King takes the Mad King for a ride, and Jordan Grace now. We have for Jordan Bob. The Kingston managing just to roll into the corner. I'm not even sure he was aware where Jordan Grace was. Santana has Jordan Grace. Ortiz has Brooks. But even the sharp edges of that. The trash cans in the on the corner. Gresham. Oh! Oh god, nowhere to be seen. How about them Yankees? Oh my goodness! Kingston has Grace up! Oh! Lethal. Forearms. Huge trade off. Oh, Gresham with that kendo stick. Into the corner goes Ortiz. Gresham, they're running into that back elbow. Here comes Gresham. Oh, Ortiz manages to get himself back up and. Good God. There's literally bodies everywhere over the ballroom and. Look at that trash can in the ring. Jordan Grace's body went through that a few moments ago. Oh my God. Oh, Gresham tried to keep his 
surely not. Brooks! Goes coast to coast! Santana! Frog splash on Brooks! Grace is back up. Oh, what a right hand from the women's champion. Oh, Eddie Kingston. Close line. Drops Gresham. STO takes Gresham down. Hey, if you uh, if you follow social media, you'll know that these two have so much of a, a tentative relationship at best. Of Eddie Kingston's being chivalrous or not, but I th has he got a Eddie Kingston's got a what it did. Oh! Kick into the stomach pike. Grayson now! Oh no! Eddie Kingston using that fork on the head of Jordan Grace! to get in another table out. Eddie Kingston directing traffic. And gets a souvenir to take home. I'm not exactly sure it's uh, the merchandise they they wanted in Grace being dragged back into the ring, whether she likes it or not. Eddie Kingston, Jordan Grace, a powerful woman in, in her own right. Fighting of Eddie Kingston is Gresham. Wheelbarrow, roll through, Gresham! Double stunner! Oh, there's the spinning back fist from Kingston, though. Taking Brooks out. Oh, oh no, Kingston. no, no, no. Nearly springboarded. Oh, kick to the nether regions by Gresham. Kingston holding on for dear life. Oh, Johnny Gray! Oh, oh, oh. oh, my God! Managed to create a bit of separation from Grace. Oh, there. Oh. Well, I didn't hear a shoot, but I believe that was a shoot kind of through a table to the floor. Oh, Ortiz now throwing chairs in the ring. LAX have got Gresham on their own. Santana. Ortiz bomb. But in comes Grace to make the save. Ortiz the bomb. Close enough. Oh, Grace. Oh. Slams the brakes on. Super kick by Santana. Grace is in a terrible spot. And Gresham spins. Gresham sent over! Cover! But Brooks breaks it up for CCK!
another shot. And now Ortiz and Santana are just stacking furniture. This isn't feng shui. This is extremely dangerous for Chris Brooks. Oh no. Oh! On the edge of the chair! And LAX and Eddie Kingston win the street fight! The winners of this contest, the team of Eddie Kingston and LAX! LAX said that they were going to bring back up. They brought it in Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston and Chris Brooks, it's safe to say, even internationally, for progress approved how little they like each other already. But today, LAX and Eddie Kingston have put the CC curse to bed. Shit, huh, folks? I seen your career when you first started. I seen you when you had your car under a mask that you hated. I seen you at Ring of Honor where they held you the fuck down. And then they finally, finally started pushing you because they realized you are without a shadow of a fucking doubt one of, if not the best professional wrestler in the ring. So, shake my hand, because I may not like you, but God damn it, you can out-wrestle me all over the place. Maybe not out-fight me. I still got to put myself over, but you can definitely out-wrestle me. And now this crazy woman, Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, a little history lesson. I don't care if the main event's running late, sue me. All you're gonna get is a pack of Newports and bad protein. I met this girl when she was 17 years old. She managed me at a promotion in Chicago. Oh my God, did everyone hate her fucking guts. I was the only one who liked her. A little bit. I love these guys, I don't know, you know. I hate women, story history. Anyway, if you notice, I'm shooting on all of them. So this is all, all honest and real. Everyone talks about a women, this, women, that. Oh, revolution and whatever the fuck else. Let me tell you something, all that women shit is dead. Cause there's no more women in wrestling. There's just wrestlers. So stop, hey, do me a favor. Do me a favor, stop labeling them as women wrestlers. They are just professional wrestlers. And ladies and gentlemen, and lady, no, no, fuck me. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, thank you. But it's not about me. It's about a young woman right here who paid her dues, who busted her ass, and is here as your fucking champion. Shake my hand. I know, Glenn, I know this is acting or whatever you want to say. I know I'm taking up time. Tell John to relax in the back. We're good. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get serious and emotional because I wear my fucking heart on my sleeve. I met these two young men years ago when he was about this skinny. He had no hair. For some reason, you wanted waves. Don't know why. I would have never guessed in my life that they would take the torch that Homicide, Low Key, and myself carry. They took it and ran. Because of these men right here, because of these men, and my younger brother and my nephew, I'm not leaving wrestling this year. It's because of these men. Fire me! I wake up every morning and I say thank you God because I got real motherfuckers standing behind me. I ride for you, I fucking die for you. And I do it for your beautiful son, I do it for your beautiful daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get a good look at these two men. Cause these two men are ready to take over this whole entire fucking world.
after all, the is probably the last time we'll see at LAX, and they were a team that dropped into a show in America, in New York for us, and then have had a storied history with us ever since. So let's hear it one more time for Santana and Ortiz for LAX. Also, it's worth mentioning our ring crew working incredibly hard. Jack, Rob and Tate all doing everything that they're doing right now. Changing the canvas, so we've got a clean canvas for our main event. And our main event is the final of this year's Natural Progression Series Tournament. Paz has the trophy here. Has previously been held by Mark Andrews. By Flash Morgan Webster. By William. By Tony Storm and by Mark Davis. We know our two finalists. It is time for you, my friends, to make the noise. My friends, are you ready for our final? You can do better than that. Are you ready for this year's Natural Progression Series final?
My friends, the following contest is this year's Natural Progression Series Final! Introducing our two finalists. First of all, across the ring and to my right. Weighing in a 175 pounds, hailing from Dublin in Ireland. He is the Supreme Suplex Machine, Scotty Davis! <laughs> and his opponent in the corner to my left, weighing in at 207 pounds and hailing from Ballum in London. Representing Do Not Resuscitate, Danny! goes for the final of the natural progression series and it has to be said <laughs> well, you only have to listen to the electric ballroom at times split in their allegiance between competitors today but Danny Duggan has made his bed he's having to have DNR on the duvet and he's gonna have to lie on it because Scotty Davis Duggan straight away. Just a, oh. just a mugging. Snap super straight into the lateral press. Going straight for that damaged neck. We saw Scotty absorb so much punishment. Those suplexes in that last matchup with Car and Awar. Devastated that, that neck and only had a very short period of time to recover. Duggan though relatively fresh going into this and and, and, and obviously has the added advantage of, of having both Mambo and Eva at ringside now. And, you know, I questioned earlier on in the evening, can Danny Duggan go one step further than last year? And the answer is yeah, but at, but at what cost at, at this point? It, it looked like DNR were coming down to, to recruit OTMO, but it was Danny Duggan that they clearly had their eyes on. And Where's that now? Turns out of the half and half. Only the one gator roll there. And now, like you said, Jordan Devlin asked from earlier on. And a oh. clothesline sends down Duggan. Davis got all of that. Oh, standing shooting star, but he manages to land on his knee. Almost Will Osprey esque. And you can see this already getting under the skin of Scotty Davis. I'm sure that Scotty oh. did. The spirit of competition that the Natural Progression Series is meant to be has been hijacked by Do Not Resuscitate, which is exactly what DNR's MO has been since its inception. You know, and on, on the opposite scale of that, Davis has had the tournament that we all anticipated him to have, you know, tore it down in, in the first round with Gene Money and then went to war with Carr and Awar and has had a really breakout performance, but it's almost coming to a point where he's hit this roadblock that is DNR. Oh, oh. Net breaker to the outside. All right, neck breaker. By Duggan. And now it seems that Duggan is just just happy to. He's happy to take a, a win any way he can get. And you mentioned going one step further, which of course Duggan has done this year by getting to the final, but imagine Danny Duggan winning the natural progression series. Scotty Davis now with a shoulder into the stomach. There's a knee lift into the side of Duggan's head. 
Oh, and now Mambo coming up to the apron. Sent off by Davis. Duggan catches him. Drops him across the top rope. Oh, there's that. Onto the neck. Bridge end. Davis manages to get out before three. Yeah, you can see the way that he kicked out as well, using his shoulders, but that's going to increase the, the pain in his neck. Hyper extending out of that kick out. And... Oh, shut up, you idiot. Oh, the wrench of the cravat. Ah, oh, and again on the neck of Davis. Matt Davis firing back. Shots to the stomach and then one to the jaw. And, oh my God! Just like that, Duggan shuts all the momentum down. Cover! You know, and, and the worst thing about this is that, that it, it is absolutely everything that DNR stand for. That they're, they're, they're hijacking this, this MPS, trying to make it all about them and taking focus away from, from the, the, the eight people that entered this tournament, the eight competitors. Danny Duggan continues the damage to the neck with his chin lock, but Davis trying to get some separation now between the hands and... Oh, but there's a nice double leg, that amateur background coming into to use there, but Duggan once again, them short elbows to the back of the neck. Just a press on the shoulders there. Duggan. 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 I mean, it's advantage, Duggan. He's had more time to rest. I mean, more time to rest. He's got a number advantage. It's just... It's almost sad to say that at this point, it seems academic that Danny Duggan reminds you to have his... Oh! Oh, there's an Olympic slam again. We saw him use that against Karin Award in the semi-finals. Oh, and you can just see that Davis is just trying to move any part of his body towards Duggan. Davis looks broken at this point. And this is a man who obviously, Matt, we've spoken about this before, you know, has won numerous championships. He's gone through tournaments in, in wrestling. He's gone through tournaments in, in various different disciplines of martial arts. And now, the ultras here getting behind the young man from Dublin. He seems to be feeding off that energy, though. Oh, headbutt into the draw. Oh, but no, the gator roll. Is he going for that tombstone? Escapes. Risk control misses with the kick. Catches oh. him the second time. He's going for a half and half, but turns him back round. Crossing the legs here. Oh, no. Oh. And lights bomb. Duggan. It's Duggan. Oh, for oh, and Chuck Mambo. Oh, bad burrito by Mambo. These two are insufferable. This entire do not resuscitate. Oh, oh God, no. Go. Oh, onto the injured neck. No! And Scotty Davis kicks out before the three! Mambo now up to the apron, screaming! Into the stomach of Mambo! Oh! 
Well, OJ Mo's out for revenge and. Oh! OJ Mo with the. Get to the stomach of the present, William A. Man to the back! Resuscitate cost the OJMO his opportunity in this final. And now the OJMO is chasing DNR out of the building. Davis now, it comes down to one on one. And you can hear the ballroom. We're in the loudest voice we've heard today, getting behind Scotty Davis. Davis with the left hand. We've got a hockey fight in the middle of the progress ring. Davis getting the upper hand with the short strikes. It's one of them, trying to ring. Wrist control. A knee into the jaw by Davis. Oh, brain buster! Dug in onto the injured neck of Davis. And Davis kicks out before three. We have seen everything that has been successful so far for Dog and that two-zone pile driver, that brain buster. But the man from Dublin refuses to stay down. And Duggan now trying to perch Scotty Davis on the top rope. Danny Duggan, who has made absolutely no fans here at the Electric Ballroom today by his conduct. And now Scotty Davis almost again at his, at his mercy as he has that front face lock on the top row. Shots to the stomach now by Davis. And, oh, big club into the, the back by Scotty Davis. I was trying to negotiate himself around. Oh my God! Avalanche German suplex. Oh, right kick! Dragon sleeper, cover! Oh, Duggan is out before three. Scotty Davis fingertips away from being the youngest ever MPS winner. Oh, Duggan is shook. Look at. The eyes have gone. Scotty Davis, this is how he's put away people. No, oh my oh, God, no, not no. again. Second tombstone, oh no. No, oh my God. Oh, cover. Series. Duggan looks both incensed but fury. I was going to say focused, Emmett. Ah. Oh. Duggan powers him up. Doesn't have enough to hold him. Oh, floats over. Oh, he's got him set up for that Omo Plata. Oh, and he's transitioned into the cross face. Duggan center of the ring. Davis wrenching back with everything he's. Oh, Duggan's trying to. 
get himself round. Davis trying to fight it. The stronger Duggan crawling across the floor. Davis rolls him over. And Scotty Davis has won the natural progression series. Series. Oh, the Prince of Irish Wrestling gets a crowd on his first appearance here in progress. Through a heavily damaged neck to the numbers being against him, somehow that teenage wonder kick has won it big here in the electric ballroom. Scotty Davis overcoming the neck being worked all afternoon, the injuries to his neck. And not just that, in the final, having to negotiate the rest of Do Not Resuscitate, the OJMO getting a monocle of revenge, but man, there's no way that, no way that story is over. But the story for today, as Scotty Davis's mentor comes out onto the stage, the man who put him into the tournament. Jordan Devlin heading down to ringside. <laughs> when we asked Scotty Davis this afternoon who his best friends were in wrestling, the first name he said, his friend, his mentor, and the man who hands him the Natural Progression Series trophy. Scotty Davis, his debut here at the Electric Ballroom. Three wins, and Scotty Davis writes his name in the Progress History books. And now, Matt, at any time of his choosing, Scotty Davis can pick a championship opportunity here in progress. I don't know much about debuts, but I know that Scotty Davis must be on cloud nine right now. And there's a man on there with him, his friend and his mentor, Jordan Devlin. Emotionally and metaphysically, I am absolutely spent. What a tournament! The Natural Progression Series 6. The winner, Scotty Davis. We will see you tomorrow at Alexandra Palace for Still Chasing, our biggest show of the year. For Matt Richards, my name's Glenn Joseph. That was the Natural Progression Series. And there is the young Irishman who just made himself an absolute star, Scotty Davis. Thank <laughs> you.